Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how you can download and install RetroPie on any Raspberry Pi system. Now, this is going to be covering the 0, 1, 2, and 3 systems. Uh, the reason why I might not be mentioning any others that are out is because at the current time of recording this, those are the only ones that are available. So, which one should I pick, you might be asking yourself. Pick the best one you can. That would be the most recommended. So, at this time while I'm recording, the best Raspberry Pi is the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. That's the one that I would recommend getting. However, if there's something better in a year or two or even three years after watching this video, go ahead, pick that up, and you can find the images available for this. And the tutorial should really be the same on here. Now, you might also be asking, what all do I need for this? First off, of course, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. As I said, I'd recommend getting the best one you can. You're also going to need a SD card or a micro SD card, depending on what Raspberry Pi you are going to be using. You're going to need a flash drive, which I would recommend at least so you have your ROMs and such set up separately and then you're going to need all the necessary stuff to hook up your Raspberry Pi. Now aside from having a type of input which we would be using a controller for this, it might help to have a keyboard on hand if you want to set up anything such as Wi-Fi later on and you're also going to need a few other things such as internet. While that's not going to be completely required, I would highly recommend having a hardlined internet connection or Wi-Fi connection of some kind. I'm going to be using hardlined internet for this. And and of course, you know, a monitor and everything to set it up. So really, the basic stuff you're going to need to hook up your Raspberry Pi. Now, we're also going to need to get a few programs here before we start. So first off, there's going to be two things we need. Now, I'm going to be on Windows, so I'm going to be using a very Windows-specific program for the disk image, but we're going to need to download the RetroPie image. So you want to go to the link down below in the description for RetroPie, come to this page, and go to Download. Now, you want to pick what version of the Raspberry Pi you have. If you don't know, just look at the top of your Raspberry Pi, and it will say there which one you have. Now, when you find that out, you want to go ahead and download the respective image. I'm going to download the image for 2 and 3 because I have a Raspberry Pi 3, and you should be able to just go ahead and get this. We've already gotten it, but I'm just going to overwrite this right here. Now, on top of that, you also want to, if you're on Windows, download this program called Win32 Disk Imager. You can get this from SourceForge, again, down below in the description. Just wait a few seconds for this to finish up here, and then you'll also be able to download this EXE. Again, we've already downloaded it, but I'm going to override it just for the sake of downloading. Now to get everything prepared, what you want to do is you want to right click if you have WinRAR, I'm using WinRAR for this, you want to right click on the archive file that you downloaded and just extract it right here wherever it is and it's going to extract this image file. On top of that, while that is going, you can also install Win32 Disk Imager just by doing run right here. And you want to go through the basic setup, make sure it does everything. You can change things if you want to. I'm not going to change anything on that. And then you want to launch this as a administrator. So if you do this, for example, and you try and launch it right off the bat, it's going to fail. You want to launch it as administrator. Now, at this point, you want to take your SD card or your micro SD card and pop it into your computer. Now, there's a few things you're going to need. You're going to need a micro SD card that is at least two gigabytes in size. That is the bare minimum for this image. Honestly, I'd recommend having four gigabytes if you can do that. And you also want it to be a class 10 SD or micro SD card. You want that so you can get, you know, the best read write speeds on there. And we're going to be putting the operating system on this. So once you have that popped in, don't worry about it. If you have any important files on there, please back them up because we're going to be formatting it and you're really not going to be able to use this for much else. So just don't expect to put your data back on there. But what you want to do is you want to open up Win32 Disk Imager. When you find it, you want to right click it, run as administrator, and then right here, you want to grab your image file. So what you want to do is you want to go over to wherever you downloaded it, which would be my desktop. So right here, you just want to go ahead, grab the image file, make sure it loads up on there, and you want to select your device. Now, very basic step right here, but you want to make sure you're not wiping anything else. So as you can see, the micro SD card I have is drive I, and we want to change this to I, so we end up overriding that. Once you have that selected, you have your device selected, you want to click right. You're going to say yes, and it is now going to overwrite that card, and it is going to write over the RetroPie image. Now, once it's done, it will tell you write successful. You can go ahead, hit OK right here, hit exit. And as you can see, it looks like this 
drive is much smaller than it was before. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead, right click, eject this safely and pop it out. At that point, you can go ahead and put it into your Raspberry Pi, but do not boot it up yet. The second thing we want to do is prepare our flash drive. So I'm going to be using a 32 gig USB 3 flash drive. I know that's a bit overkill, but I mean, it was cheap enough. So I grabbed it for this tutorial and just to use in general. And what you want to do again, if you have anything important on this flash drive, back it up because we're going to wipe it. What we're going to do here is we're just going to right click format it and you can pick either NTFS or FAT32. I'm going to pick FAT32 just so it works on everything. Plus there's no images I'm going to be copying on here and no ROMs that are over four gigabytes in size. Once you have this all set up, you can also change the allocation size. You might as well make it the biggest one right there. And I'm going to call it retro pie. I'm going to do a quick format and just do start. So as you can see, it's going to wipe everything and that's it. Now what you want to do is close, go in here, and you want to make a new folder called Retro Pi. One word, all lowercase, and that's all you need to do to prepare for it. Now what you want to do is eject this, and don't pop in your flash drive yet, but take it out of your computer and keep it next to your Raspberry Pi. We're now going to move over to the Pi to set everything up. Now once you turn on the Raspberry Pi with your SD card inside of there, it's going to resize the SD card accordingly, so that way this program RetroPie will be able to utilize the full SD card as opposed to just being able to use that two gigabytes that was in the original image there. And then it's going to set up RetroPie and initialize it. After that, it's also going to do emulation station. This takes less than a minute, so just let it do its thing until you get to the main menu. Now, once this loads up, what you want to do is make sure you have a controller connected and then you want to map all of the buttons to it. I'm using a Xbox One controller and it is wired in right here. Now, this is a bit tricky but when you get to the very end when it comes down here and you are highlighting the OK button you want to hold down the A or the accept button for a few seconds and once that's done you're at the retro pie menu now once you're here what I highly recommend doing and this is why you need the internet connection is go in and update everything so you want to go into retro pie go to the retro pie setup and let it load up everything right here after this once it installs everything and it brings up the GUI you want to go ahead hit OK and then you want to have it update all of your installed components which should be that second option. So first off, it's going to download the latest version of the RetroPie update script. Once that's done, you can go ahead, hit OK right there. And then what I recommend doing afterwards is it's then going to ask you if you want to update your kernel and all the underlying things. If I were you, I would say yes. Now this is the longest part of the process. This took me about 30 minutes to do. So at this point, I would just leave the RetroPie there and go use the bathroom, take a shower, make yourself a cup of coffee, do whatever you want to do or play a game and just let it go in and update the kernel, everything else, and the emulators on here. Now this has been completed, you want to go ahead, hit OK right here. And what I recommend doing is just going down to the very bottom option and reboot your Raspberry Pi and just wait about a minute or so for that to reboot. Once it reboots, you should be back in the RetroPie menu. Once it reboots back into the RetroPie front end, you want to take that flash drive that we prepared earlier and pop it into any of the USB ports and just leave it in there until it's stops flashing. If you don't have a USB flash drive with a activity light on there, I'd say just leave it in there for a minute and then once it's done, pop it out and plug it into your computer. Now when you plug your flash drive back in, you want to go over to it and remember how there was only this one folder right here? Well now if you go in, there's configs, BIOS, and ROMs. Now you're not going to need BIOS unless you have a system that you're emulating that specifically runs BIOS and such and requires it and then you could put it in there and that's going to depend on a few things. I know PlayStation is one of them for example, but most time you're not going to need any BIOS. But what you want to do is go to your ROMs folder and check this out. What it does is for every single emulator that is currently installed and compatible on your retro Pi, it has created a folder that you could put the respective ROMs into. So for example, GB is Game Boy, GBC is Game Boy Color, N64, of course Nintendo 64. Now the one that throws off a lot of people is Mega Drive. A lot of people in the US might be looking for Genesis. Mega Drive and Genesis are the same thing. But this is what you want to do. You want to go ahead and find your ROMs, which I cannot help and please do not link to any sites or anything I cannot help with because that's kind of getting into the murky copyright territory. However, I do have a few ROMs that I have that I decided to grab and copy over to here. So these are for four different systems. So for example, for Game Boy Advance, you want to go ahead, go over to GBA. We're going to copy and paste this in here. 
Now for your NES, for example, I'm going to go ahead and just grab this, copy and paste that in. For SMC, that is Super Nintendo, so we're going to look for SNES, we're going to drop that in. And then for Gen, aka Genesis, that's going to be Mega Drive, as I said, I'm going to drop this in right here. So I only have four ROMs on four different systems, that's what I'm doing for this example right here. And what we can now do is we can go back, we can safely eject the flash drive, and you want to pop it back into your RetroPie. Now with the RetroPie on, go ahead and pop your flash drive in there, and again, leave it in there and don't touch it until the flash drive activity light stops blinking. Once it does, you can go press the start button on your controller, go to quit, and restart emulation station. And now once it does that, you're going to see that you now have the emulators available for the games that you popped onto that flash drive. So you can go ahead and play around with them. Really the basic controls on there, you can go ahead and go into any of them, press A on a ROM that you want to play, and then when you press A on there, it'll bring up a little menu and you can press A again to configure it, or you can just leave it alone and let it boot up and just do its thing. Uh, if you want to restart, you need to hold down the start and select buttons and that will boot you back over to Retro Pie, but really that's about it. If you ever want to add more games to it, which I'm sure you're probably going to want to do, again, all you need to do is copy the files into their respective folders and then put the flash drive back in there, wait for the activity light to stop blinking, and then restart emulation station, and everything should be refreshed at that point. Now, if you ever want to configure anything else, what you need to do is you need to go back over to the front end, go to the Retro Pie section, and from there you can configure, for example, your Bluetooth, your audio, your Wi-Fi, your setup. Again, if if you ever want to update the scripts, you want to update your emulators, because there's always updates for this thing, you're always able to do it from here. So this is where it would be better to have a keyboard, especially if you're doing something like setting up a static IP or setting up a Wi-Fi network on here. But hopefully this tutorial helped you all out and you now have a awesome Raspberry Pi turned into a retro Pi and you can get ready for some retro gaming goodness. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, a like would be appreciated. And if you absolutely hated it because you really don't like pies in any shape or size or you just don't like retro games, which, okay, I mean, they don't look the best. I understand that. A dislike is fine, too.